We're going to pretend for a minute that I have run an experiment with a ticker tape timer or something similar like this and that I've got some data which shows tenths of a second. Every tenth of a second I've measured the position of a particular object that I've fired out of a gun or cannon or something like this. So I've got time and I've got position. Uh, technically should have a vector notation there, but Excel is not going to let us do that. What you guys should always do is denote up in the top here, at the top of your columns, the units that you're using because that has no meaning unless I know which units you guys are using. Okay, so I put my units in and this is just data that I've gotten from an experiment. And I want to do a couple of things. I want to calculate my average velocity and again Excel is not going to let me do a subscript up there and actually I made a mistake in the displacement there, didn't I? So we'll go back and change that to just meters. And I'm going to do also a calculation to find average acceleration. And this will be in meters per second. And the notation to have a squared would be uh, what we call a caret, that upward zero, and two. That's meters per second squared. So uh, quick review of our formula for average velocity is change in position over change in time. Yeah, that's actually pretty easy because I have position and I've got my time. I can't actually calculate it for the first uh, spot on my table there, but I can go to the second set because now I know that my change in position is simply this guy here minus that guy there. And I got to use brackets because Excel will use bedmos and you don't want to multiply or sorry divide one item by another one. Um, in this case, you want to do your subtractions first and then do the division. So I'm going to calculate my change in time just like that. I'd recommend if you're unfamiliar with doing this to um, use a calculator and just double check your result to make sure you get the right result. And then I'm going to actually click and drag this little box down here. This trick will work most of the time. And I, the way I'm doing this is it's basically copying and pasting that formula down and I can check it's going to automatically change it so that it does the right calculation with the right set of values each time. And then I'm going to go and adjust this for the right number of significant digits that I have, more or less here. Uh, and for average acceleration, it's the same basic principle, but I need to compare my average velocity. So that means I can't actually make a calculation until I get down to row four here. And it's going to be the change in velocity. Oops. Change in velocity. There we go. Divided by the change in time. Just like that. And there's my average acceleration for each one of those segments. Uh, sometimes in a uh, lab report like this, you are going to have to do uh, some graphing. And I'm going to show you a couple of tricks with graphing here um, right away. Um, graphing, basically, I would just highlight the columns that I want to graph. And in fact, we'll even do all three of these. And then we are going to go and get a graphing tool here. Most things in physics are going to be an XY scatter plot. A line chart is not going to give you the results that make sense a lot of the time because we want to have our time on the x-axis and our we're going to do a uh, distance time graph uh, in this case, a position time graph. Okay, so I go ahead here and then I can go and look at which series I want. I want a position time graph, so actually I can even remove these last two here. Okay, This looks like some sort of a projectile in motion. Um, and you'll see in a minute, that's exactly what it is. That looks okay to me. And let's uh, not have a legend. Let's not worry about grid lines. And we'll pop that guy in here. Okay, there you go. Of course, you would always want to label your axes. Okay, to do that, we can go into chart options and titles, and on my x-axis I should actually have, let's move this guy down here, x-axis is going to be time, and this will be in seconds, 
and this will be on the y-axis is going to be position in meters and this is just a position time graph okay there's our position time graph units on the axes as well and just numbers in here okay let's get this a little tidier looking okay there's our data set you can see they roughly follow a, what looks like a parabola here is the trick okay so that's a nice graph and we'll just move on to do line of best fit here which is the trick if I want to actually find out all of my parameters like uh, initial velocity and uh, acceleration everything like this I can look at my table over here and I can get an approximation but there's a much better way to do that so I could approximate that my initial velocity might have been about 3.6 meters per second and that my acceleration it might be somewhere maybe around 10 meters per second minus 10 meters per second a better way to do that is to right click on your points there and add a trend line uh, the trend line type that I would want, depending on the type of graph you have, you might have more options here. We want polynomial and we want order two. And the reason that we want that is because if we go back to our equation for uniform acceleration, which is the first one on that list there, uh, that one has displacement equals V times change in time plus one-half acceleration times the change in time squared. What that looks like is a y equals ax plus bx squared plus c. Okay, quadratic uh, equation. The reason that we want to go back into Excel and you do a polynomial in order 2 is that's going to give us an equation that looks very close to our displacement equation. So I'm going to say OK to this. That gives me a trend line and notice that um, this thing follows exactly those points on the screen. I can change the type. I could do a linear trend line, which obviously is not going to fit uh, in this case. Okay, but if you had linear points, then that would be a really good uh, option to do. I want to do one more thing here. I'm going to format my trend line, and there are some options. The option that I want is to display my equation on the chart. So not only will it draw the trend line for you, It'll also give you an equation that looks very much like your um, uh, position uh, equation that we just uh, saw in Microsoft Word there. We've got something x squared plus something x plus a constant. Okay, so that constant is basically your initial position. This guy right here, 4.079x, is actually our initial velocity. So that looks like 4.079 meters per second. And our acceleration, actually this is a little tricky if we look back to our equation, this term is one-half at squared. So what this actually tells us over here, there's our x squared is like t squared, and we actually have uh, acceleration, we have one-half a equal to minus 4.7602. Okay, so if I did the math on that one, I would find that 9.52 would be roughly my acceleration. Okay, now I'm going to just check back because I, what I've done is taken these uh, numbers from a different spreadsheet here, and I've actually used a equation to calculate these. So we've calculated our acceleration of minus 9.52. That should actually be meters per second squared. And our initial velocity at 4.079. Compare that to what we sort of estimate as minus 10 or maybe about 3.6. We're going to go look at the original numbers here. I used a formula to calculate this here. Our initial velocity right there is 4.2 meters per second. And our acceleration, because we're on Earth, is minus 9.8 in this case. Okay. And you can, if you're curious what this rand divide by 10 thing is here, that just gives us a little bit of variation. So some of these points show up a little bit above and some a little bit below, just approximating what a real experiment would be. Okay, so that's your quick uh, tutorial on how to use Word and Excel in a couple of different ways to um, 
help you out uh, with your lab reports and your assignments. And what I will do is I will post uh, these uh, Excel spreadsheets and, and also the Word document uh, on the website so that you can access those as well. Hope this uh, will be helpful to you.